Well, welcome everybody. It's great to see everybody here. It's great to have these distinguished guests I'll introduce in a moment. Um, I don't know everyone here. My name's Rick McDonald. I'm the director for uh, Phalanx and CRAM and, and uh, LPWS uh, based out of Tucson. Uh, it's great to be here to celebrate uh, all the work that we've done here to, uh, to get CRAM to the place that it's at today and deployed on the road to DDGs. And that couldn't have happened as fast as it happened, as high quality as it happened without what you guys here have done. And I really want, part of this is really to say thank you to all of you for that. And the Navy really appreciates it. And uh, the company appreciates it. The warfighter appreciates it. Uh, just, this, is, this really is as much for you as anything else. So thank you very much. So, welcome to Raytheon's large-scale integration facility. Uh, I say that because more than just Phalanx is done here. Uh, as many of you know, we're bringing new products into the factory uh, over the coming years and going to grow the facility. So to get us out onto the DDGs in Rota, Spain, was a collaborative effort. Uh, most of the video that you saw there was testing that was done just over the span of a few short months uh, last year. Uh, we had to have collaboration between industry, the government, uh, our partners in the military, uh, state and local officials, uh, all coming together to get the funding in place, to get the schedules where they needed to be, to get the material where we needed it to be, to get the testing done, and finally to get those systems uh, installed on our ships in, uh, in Spain. It's been a fantastic uh, collaborative, uh, collaborative effort. Um, today we're honored to have a distinguished list of guests to celebrate with us, uh, starting uh, with our own Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, has come to, to speak to us today. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support of our employees and the operations in Louisville. You've long been a supporter of us, and we really, really appreciate that. We also have our mayor, uh, Mayor Greg Fisher. Uh, we have our uh, major program manager from uh, IWS, uh, Captain Craig Bowden, uh, who will be speaking to us. And then, and then of course, rounding it all out, we have uh, Dr. Lawrence, uh, our president and uh, uh, the, the gentleman who's helped support us through all the uh, Raytheon schedules and funding that we've needed to do. So thank all of you for your resolve in creating such a positive business climate for our programs, for the business here in Kentucky. Uh, it's been wonderful. And I'm going to start off by introducing our speakers. Uh, I'm proud, pleased to introduce Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher. Uh, the mayor is in his second term leading this great city and has been a leading proponent of advanced manufacturing, something that we're going to start bringing to our programs. He's also initiated a regional business economics advancement movement with uh, Lexington, and he certainly understands the importance of economic development, something that is going to continue to play a big role here at this facility. Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you, and good afternoon, everybody. It's really an honor to be among the distinguished guests that we have here today. First, I'd like to thank our friends from the United States Navy for protecting our country and doing a great job each and every day. Thanks to you guys. Raytheon Missile Systems, obviously a really valuable partner that we have here in our city. Our federal partner with the leader here, it's been, our offices have worked together very well on this project and other projects as well. So, and for those not from Louisville, I want to say welcome to Louisville. And that's how we say it here, Louisville. <laughs> For the guys that work here, I just want to say something real quick. Uh, we just did a, a factory tour, and I want to say I was here probably three or four years ago, and I just wanted to say great job on the progress that you continue to make. When I was here first, you all had won the Shingo Prize several years before that. To win the Shingo, as you all know, is one of the premier achievements in manufacturing. And that is something that very few companies get to do. And I just learned also that you won the Cogswell Award. So I don't know how many companies in the world have won the Shingo and the Cogswell, but I'm sure you can count it on less than one hand probably. So that is an extraordinary testament to what you all are doing here as a total organization. And when you go through this factory and you see the emphasis that you all have on cleanliness uh, in a manufacturing environment, this is a world-class environment. That obviously leads to safety. I understand your all's safety record is also top-notch as well. I have never been to a safe factory that's not a clean factory. And so you all are to be congratulated on that type of emphasis and the progress that you've made with visual manufacturing and workplace organization here is to be commended as well. So I'm an old manufacturing person 
And I really appreciate when I come into a plant and see that type of efficiency, and that is the result of a lot, a lot of work by a lot of folks. So I just wanted to say from one manufacturing person to another, uh, congratulations for a job well done here. So let's talk about like, the bigger picture for a moment. Louisville has a long and proud history of supporting and working with our nation's military. I mean, it can go back all the way to the creation of Rubbertown, uh, where everybody knows where that is in our city, not too far away from here, where we very quickly came to became the rubber supplier for our armed forces during World War II. And then our proximity to Fort Knox has meant that active duty personnel, as well as, as veterans and military families, have long been an integral part of our community. And at Metro Government, we put a priority on serving those that have served our country. Uh, we partner with Opportunity Knox, so K-N-O-X, as in Fort Knox, to help more veterans find jobs in the Louisville area, so a nationally recognized best practice. We were also one of the first cities in the country to sign up for President Obama's mayor's challenge to eliminate homelessness amongst veterans in our country. Uh, that took place in 2014. And along with our community partners, we identified about 360 homeless veterans in Louisville. And I'm happy to say that we were one of the first cities in the country to house all of those veterans and then also have a continuing process to house any veterans that for whatever reason find themselves is homeless. And our community has rallied around this effort in a big way, and I'm sure many of y'all have helped in that area, so I want to say thank you for that as well. It's the least that we can do for our veterans. We're also really be proud to be home of Raytheon Louisville. We're a top flight defense systems that you all make and engineer every day, like the Phalanx and the CRAM are produced and developed. Uh, we're also naturally excited that the new Naval Strike Missile Launcher is going to be built here in Louisville. And the addition of these new products from Raytheon is great news for us because it means even more job growth uh, in advanced manufacturing and engineering. These are areas that we place a lot of emphasis on in our city. We're not big enough that we can be everything to everybody, but we have five economic development clusters where we feel like we can be or are best in world in advanced manufacturing. What you all do here and what you're going to continue to do in the future is one of those clusters. So thanks for making us an international point of distinction. It's really important to our economy. We have about 77,000 citizens employed in manufacturing in Louisville. And we've seen, just in this past year, almost a billion dollars in new capital investments and over a thousand jobs created in the manufacturing sector alone, and we have got a lot more coming. So I want to thank all the innovative professionals here at Raytheon uh, who call our community home and for the incredible work that you do here day in and day out. And I'd like to congratulate all the men and women of Raytheon and the U.S. Navy on their successful CRAM test that were conducted earlier this year that we just saw the outstanding demonstration of. I think when you put our country's uh, ingenuity and entrepreneurial spirit up against any other country, in my view, there's nobody that comes close. And that uh, rubber meets the road in factories like this. And we are living, obviously, in a world that is uncertain and unpredictable in our ability to both uh, proactive and reactive in terms of defending ourselves has never been more important. And when you're working on the shop floor or designing one of these systems, you are part of our national defense effort. You are part of being a great citizen and a great patriot for the United States of America. And in my view, that has never been more important. So thanks, everybody, for all their good work. Thanks for Raytheon for growing here in our city and to all involved. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, up next is uh, Captain uh, Craig Bowden. He is our uh, trusted and valued partner at IWS 11 uh, with the United States Navy. Uh, Captain Bowden served as the Chief Financial Officer for PEO IWS from September of 2013 until March of 2015. He spearheaded management over the annual warfighting systems budget of almost $5 billion to include our products here. And some of them are the most complex, highly specialized, and technically dynamic uh, systems the uh, NAVC organization produces. In March of this year, Captain Bowden assumed command as major program manager for the rolling airframe missile program. 
It's a cooperative program between uh, industry, Raytheon in the U.S., and the German governments. And then earlier this year, also, Captain Bowden was selected to be the first major program manager for POIWS Terminal Defense Systems, which now comprises the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, CRAM, RAM, and LPWS. So please give a warm welcome to Captain Bowden, Craig. Thank you for the um, introduction, Rick. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Senator McConnell, Mayor Fisher, Dr. Lawrence, distinguished guests, it is an honor to be here today with you to celebrate this momentous occasion for the CRAM program and the United States Navy. Raytheon partners, thank you for including me in your ceremony, allowing me uh, the opportunity to speak uh, about the importance of the CRAM weapon system to the United States Navy and our allies. In four months, the CRM mount serial S216, which is right there, uh, in four months it will be shrink-wrapped, placed on a flatbed truck, and will leave this facility on its way to Rota, Spain, where it will be installed on board the USS Ross DDG-71. Ross is part of a squadron of four forward-deployed Aegis-class destroyers that provide a key element to our nation's phased adaptive approach to the ballistic missile defense of the United States of America and our European allies. This CRAM mount and the three others on board Ross's sister ships, the Porter, the Kearney, and the Donald Cook, allow those Rota-based DDGs to effectively and safely carry out their critical ballistic missile defense missions. Without these CRAM systems, they could not safely do this. That's how important CRAM, right there, is to our Navy, to the United States, and to our allies. CRAM is a technical marvel, an example of American ingenuity that combines the highly successful Phalanx close-in weapon system, which has been built here by the great Americans in Louisville for the last 35 years. It combines that with the Navy's best anti-ship cruise missile missile, the Block II rolling airframe missile, which also has many components built here in Louisville. The combination of these two systems makes CRAM the Navy's best defense against the most stressing anti-ship threats our sailors face throughout the world today. I could spend hours talking about the tantalizing technical aspects of CRAM, but I'm not going to. Instead, I think it's more appropriate to recognize and honor the efforts of the great Americans comprising the government and industry team who develop, build, and install this incredible system. Even though CRM is also being installed on board many of the Navy's newest warships, primarily the littoral combat ships, or, or LCSs, the best way to accurately recognize the truly gargantuan efforts that occurred here at this Louisville manufacturing plant and out in the fleet is to briefly review the story of, of the first CRAM installation on board the USS Porter. This story highlights the possibilities that exist when you have a strong government industry partnership that is hell-bent on protecting our national assets. In February 11th, or on February 11th, 2015, an urgent operational need was issued for naval forces in Europe that established a new requirement to install CRAM on the four forward deployed DDGs in Rota. Up to that point, there was no plan to install CRAM on any Aegis warship. In October 15, exactly 261 days after the fleet's urgent request, the first DDG CRAM system rolled off the production line here in Louisville and was delivered to the United States Navy. The mount underwent a series of tests, including several live firings for a period of 71 days, and was finally delivered and installed on the USS Porter in Rota, Spain in February 2016. Total time from the fleet's urgent request to the first age of CRM installation was a mere 383 days. That just doesn't happen. This is an incredible feat that overcame numerous challenges and was only made possible by the iron strong teamwork between Raytheon folks here in Louisville and Tucson the government program office, the resource sponsors, the insurers, engineering agencies, the maintenance centers, and of course Congress who authorized the above threshold reprogramming action that quickly funded this effort. 
My following description of the challenges does not do justice to the hundreds and really thousands of technical, logistical, development, production issues that had to be overcome to get CRAM on the, on the first DDG on time. I highlight just a few of those issues and efforts. In order for the first installation to occur on schedule, the CWIS production line here in Louisville had to be dramatically, had to dramatically shift focus. Technical drawings and requirements had to be established and delivered. Parts had to be procured, production work schedules realigned, and ultimately the systems built. None of these actions are an easy task, particularly on a hot production line that's already cranking out phalanx weapon systems. As a direct result of the tremendous efforts here in Louisville and on board Porter and Rota Spain, the ship deployed on time to meet her national taskings. And this, and as in fact, she is still on deployment somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. As I stated previously, the development and fielding of the CRM system is the result of a tremendous government and industry team effort that has arguably produced the world's finest maritime shipboard self-defense combat system. And I em emphasize combat system. Ongoing CRM system installations are occurring on both the Freedom and Independence uh, versions of the littoral combat ships and will occur, and will occur on the future um, fast frigate warships. So the, the future is very bright for CRAM. Our collective efforts bringing CRAM into the fleet serve as a constant reminder that everything we do in the Navy's acquisition community with our industry partners is to provide maximum sea power into the hands of our sailors. Whether it's conducting missions in the littorals or protecting, or protecting access to the international waters on the high seas, it is our objective to make sure that no matter what our sailors are called upon to do, they are equipped with the very best combat systems that ensure mission success and just as equally important, their safe return home. We've accomplished that with CRAM. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Captain. I now have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Taylor Lawrence. Dr. Lawrence is Raytheon Company Vice President and President of Raytheon Missile Systems. Before joining Raytheon, he held several executive positions with Northrop Grumman. We're okay with that. <laughs> His experience includes work as a staff director for the United States or United U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, and he was Deputy Director of Information Systems at the Office of uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. A physicist by education and training, Dr. Lawrence holds a bachelor's degree in physics from the California Institute of Technology. He also holds a master's degree and a PhD in applied physics from Stanford. Please give us a warm welcome for Dr. Taylor Lawrence. Thanks, Rick. Good afternoon. It's certainly great to be back here in Louisville in the great state of Kentucky to see all the wonderful things you guys are doing for national security, for our warfighters at sea, and to keep America safe. We're here to celebrate the CRAM Anti-Ship Missile Defense System, and it will remain a game changer for the U.S. Navy for years to come. Mr. Leader, it's great to have you here. It's good to see you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, good to see you as well. Captain Bowden, great, great comments. Uh, representatives of Car Congressman Yarmouth, Governor Bevan, uh, and Under Secretary Davidson, uh, it's, it's wonderful to have all of you here to, to celebrate with us a significant achievement of our workforce here in Louisville. As Captain Bowden talked to you about the story, when we received the urgent call from our warfighting community for a naval defense system back in February of 2015, we knew that CRAM was the best choice to fulfill the mission. And as many of you know, the CRAM program had an interesting journey on its way to becoming the exceptional system it is today. It goes back about 15 years to 2001 when it was an industry and an international initiative. And the first CRAM was actually done as an engineering prototype aboard the HMS York. Uh, and we did that with the UK's Royal Navy back in 2001 and 2002. And in just a few years after we did the prototype for the UK, the US Navy funded an effort to continue the development of CRAM. And four years later in 2005, the first development system for use on US Navy platforms was unveiled in Tucson, Arizona. The radar upgrade that was funded under this effort was shared across phalanx and land-based phalanx 
And you saw both of those outside as you came into the facility today. So we, we took this development in CRAM and extended it across the whole family of close and weapon systems. And then production of the CRAM system was transferred and began here in Louisville back in 2009. And to date, we've, we've built a total of 16 mounts, including four systems that we've delivered to our allies in Japan. We currently have another 13 systems on order, and demand continues to rise both domestically and internationally for the capabilities that CRAM brings to the warfighter for all the reasons that Captain Bowden told you. Our steady phalanx in CRAM production over the years has been possible because of unwavering support for our programs from Congress, and especially from our leader, Senator McConnell. Together they have worked to provide the funding, the funding to perform 20 overhauls per year, ensuring up-to-date defense for our warfighters and increased engineering work for the Louisville community. When we received the UONS, the urgent operational need that Captain Bowden told you the story of, I knew the team here in Louisville could step up to the challenge and had the skill and experience to get it done quickly. And as he said, in record time, for any kind of government program, in just about a year after the release of the UONS, the Navy successfully completed the first live fire from the USS Porter destroying a subsonic target with a RAM Block II missile fired from the CRAM. That's unprecedented, one year after the Yuans was, was first put forward. It's a tremendous achievement that all of you can be extraordinarily proud of. So as Captain Bowden said, we've got three CRAM mounts have already been deployed to Rota, Spain. The Navy has recently successfully tested the second mount on the USS Kearney, and the third was shipped this past week for install with a four soon to follow. Shrink wrap, right? Right, Captain? And it's really a testament to all of the workforce here in Louisville. I want to thank you uh, for the commitment that you have to our national defense and to our warfighters, and really to congratulate each of you. It's an extraordinary workforce you have in Louisville, and it's a family, and the support that you have for both the systems and for the, and the capabilities and the deployments for our warfighters is, is just to be commended. In the months ahead, we're looking forward to bringing in new systems for production here in Louisville. Again, your excellence and your commitment to excellence and your commitment to, as the mayor said, to safety and quality and performance, your commitment to doing things right the first time allows us to bring even more uh, to the table. And also, I want to also thank you for your commitment to the transition uh, to our company's uh, integrated SAP system. I know it's been a little bit trying, uh, a little bit tough, but once we get through it, it's going to allow us to bring even more work here to Louisville. So your commitment to getting through the SAP PRISM in integration allows us now to bring things from all over Raytheon, and it'll be easy to integrate them here uh, into, uh, into the Louisville operation. It makes you a world-class center of excellence in manufacturing integration. So as, as all of you know, we've announced the addition of the Naval Strike Missile Launcher, which will be produced here in Louisville. Uh, I was over at the air show uh, last month, met with the, uh, the CEO of Kongsberg, uh, and we just uh, signed a contract with Kongsberg Defense Systems, the Norwegian company, for the first order of NSM launchers and their qualification units. Um, and we'll, we'll see that grow. Uh, we have a number of uh, other programs down the pike that we're looking to bring here, including what's right here to my right is the technology refresh program for, for Phalanx. We're looking to bring an additional uh, 30 engineering jobs uh, to Louisville to support that. This demo mount, which is a test bed for many of our risk reduction initiatives, uh, is one that we're looking forward to, to demonstrating and then building on the history of Phalanx and bringing new technologies and basically integrating new technologies into the system. And none of this would be possible without the superior, superior work of the team here, and also the support of our military and our government stakeholders and members of the community. And with that, I'd like to uh, introduce our, our final speaker today, who's an outstanding leader who has helped bring these two new technologies to Louisville. As Kentucky's longest serving senator, Mitch McConnell has worked hard for Kentuckians since 1984 and is currently in a record sixth term. As Senate Majority Leader, he has prioritized bolstering our nation's security and defense. Under his leadership, the 2015 National Defense Authorization Act has given our warfighters increased pay, benefits, and access to more training and equipment. He has additionally taken action on education reform, 
tax relief for businesses and working families, veterans affairs, and health care, among other initiatives. Senator McConnell has proven himself to be an exceptional leader, one who cares deeply about the welfare of Louisville, the state of Kentucky, and our nation. And God knows we need some adult supervision and some sanity in Washington right now. It's my pleasure to introduce some of that. Mr. Leader, Senator Mitch McConnell. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, it's great to be back here. I spent um, a number of years of my early life in South Louisville, lived here. I played in the Beachmont Little League for a couple of years, after which I figured <clears throat> I better go into another line of work. <laughs> I had some uh, exciting moments and some humbling moments in the, uh, in the Beachmont Little League when I was a kid. And listening to all these fine uh, presentations uh, reminds me that, uh, remember when President Reagan <clears throat> first started talking about missile defense back in the early 80s, he was attacked as um, suggesting some laboratory fantasy. And in, but the truth of the matter is, the beginning of the studying of missile defense of all kinds has become an indispensable part of protecting ourselves and our allies. Think of the Iron Dome over Israel, which has worked almost perfectly in knocking missiles out of the air. And this incredible innovation that you all are producing, the CRAM, uh, protecting our ships, not only our ships, but the ships of our allies. And we're thrilled that it's done here in Louisville, Kentucky. I, I learned as we transition from the old Naval Ordinance over to the next uh, future for these facilities, that I think the reason the Navy was in the middle of the country in World War II is because it was a long way from the sea and they thought it'd be easier to protect the facility. Well, we're glad you're still here after all those years. And I want to say to the team at Raytheon, we're thrilled that you're keeping this facility here. We've got a great workforce. This is a wonderful community. And this, this kind of weapon is going to continue to be of vital significance. I mean, remember we all breathed a sigh of relief when the Berlin Wall came down. We thought peace was at hand and life would never be so challenging again. In the last 25 years since the Berlin Wall came down, it almost makes you yearn for the Cold War. We knew who the bad guys were. We knew who the good guys were. And we were able to develop key alliances like NATO that kept the Soviets in check, <clears throat> and the Cold War ended without firing a shot. But of course, life being what it is, new threats emerged. New threats from non-state actors, lone wolf terrorists. Uh, it's a complex and challenging defense environment. It challenges the best minds that we have. It typically doesn't rely on large scale manpower but high-tech weaponry of all kinds. And I can't tell you how proud I am to see in my hometown this kind of extraordinary innovation in defending our ships and the ships of our allies around the world. This challenge is gonna go on for a long time. There's nobody to negotiate with. It's not clear when and how it ends. This is the principal challenge of the 21st century. And this facility here in Louisville, Kentucky is meeting the test with its talented workforce. And we're all so grateful. And I think I can say that on behalf of the whole nation, not just as a senator from Kentucky, but as the majority leader of the Senate, how deeply grateful we are to all of you for what you do here. It's not only important to Louisville, Kentucky, it's important to our entire country. So thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today.